Hi guys, it is a cool and cloudy Tuesday, September 1st. We have made it to September. Unbelievably, we are, what does that make us? Two-thirds of the way through 2020 as we move towards the fall of 2020. I just love that term, the fall of 2020. Coming up in three weeks. Uh, but oh yes, I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles. This is my worn out little uh, co-pilot, Sancho Panza. And see what we come up with. Just some various uh, flotsam and jetsam on my mind. Now I notice in the comments that Book Hermit has stirred up. Uh, but several other people have asked me to weigh in on about this new report from the CDC. This is directly from the CDC's website for 6%, 6% of the COVID-related deaths that they looked at uh, recently. COVID for 6% of the deaths, COVID-19 was the only cause mentioned for deaths with conditions or causes in addition to COVID-19, meaning in the 94% of deaths attributed to, uh, to the corona panic, for 94% of those cases, on average, there were 2.6 additional conditions, conditions or causes per death. This, of course, talking about the pre-existing conditions that 94% of the one, when it was at 161, that 94% uh, the 161 deaths included people who had pre-existing conditions, got the corona panic, and that's what took them over the edge. Uh, 6%, so 9,000 of the uh, 9,000 of the 161,000 people were directly killed by corona panic, but I understand that nobody on this channel at least wants to hear it. There's plenty of other places that you can find more discussion of this uh, on YouTube. So we're going to move along since I understand that this audience outside of Book Hermit and a couple of other people have no interest in the fact that 94% of people who have died of Corona panic uh, in the U.S had pre-existing conditions. Uh, okay, but we're going to move on. Uh, I have been uh, saying for years about as soon as China announced it was not buying all of this plastic crap, uh, our plastic waste from the U.S. and all these other first world countries, that Africa was going to end up being the dumping ground for the billions of tons of this plastic crap uh, that we all produce. Uh, and here we are, the number one story on the planet. The number one story on the planet, unbelievably today, according to the Yahoo News editors, is this long, long involved piece from the good old New York Times headlined, Big Oil is in Trouble, its plan flood Africa with plastic. And this is both uh, new plastic and junk plastic. Um, confronting a climate crisis that threatens the fossil fuel industry, we shall see oil companies are racing to make more plastic. Yes, but they face two problems. Many markets are already awash with plastic, and few countries are willing to be dumping grounds for the world's plastic waste. 
So the industry thinks it has found a solution to both problems in Africa. Yes. Um, according to documents reviewed by the New York Times, an industry group representing the world's largest chemical makers and fossil fuel companies is lobbying to influence U.S. trade negotiations with Kenya, uh, one of Africa's biggest economies, to reverse its strict limits on plastic. It is pressing for Kenya to continue importing foreign plastic garbage. Uh, and, and guys, Kenya is, is <coughs> certainly involved in this, but it's not even Kenya uh, that we're talking about. It is going to be places like Ghana and Niger and, you know, these failed states uh, that my guess are already where all of this crap is headed. Uh, so what, um, where does it say in this long article, uh, after China closed its ports to plastic trash, exporters have been looking for new dumping grounds. Okay, exports to Africa more than quadrupled in 2019 from one year earlier. Uh, obviously, and again, that's, uh, that's going, that quadrupling is going to, uh, to keep pace. Uh, the Kenya proposal, quote, really set off alarm bells. Yes, I bet it did. Where does it say? Good Lord, this is a long article. Uh, it, it, anyway, this is some guy from Shell uh, products from, derived from petrochemicals will continue to grow and provide attractive returns, you know, even with, uh, with the price of oil dropping. Okay, here we go. ExxonMobil <clears throat> has forecast that global demand for petrochemicals, many if not most of which going to produce more plastic could rise by nearly 45% over the next decade, significantly outpacing global economic growth and energy demand. And uh, there you go. But that's what's going on in sub-Saharan Africa. What's going on uh, north and south of sub-Saharan Africa? Earth's ice sheets, plural, tracking worst case climate scenarios. Do you think so? The Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets, I had to, we had a new troll show up on, uh, on Collapse Chronicles. Uh, talking about how there the Antarctic ice sheets are much, there's a lot more ice in the Antarctic ice sheets than there was 30 years ago. Don't worry, I got rid of him real quick. Anyway, the Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets, which hold enough frozen water to lift ocean 65 meters, 65 meters, otherwise known as 200 feet, are tracking the UN's worst case scenarios for sea level rise. Researchers have said highlighting flaws in current climate change models. Mass loss caused by meltwater and crumbling ice from 2007 to 2017 <coughs> aligned with the most extreme 
forecast from the IPCC, which sees the two ice sheets adding up to 40 centimeters, or about 16 inches, to global oceans by 2100. Uh, but anyone who believes that, um, so even that, uh, <clears throat> even that increase would have a devastating impact worldwide, increasing the destructive power of storm surges and exposing coastal regions home to hundreds of millions of people to repeated and severe flooding. Uh, that is nearly three times, so that, uh, the worst case scenario, is nearly three times more than the mid-range projections from the 2014. Uh, we see where this is going. Uh, despite this clear mismatch between the observed reality of accelerating ice sheet disintegration and the models tracking those trends. Uh, a special IPCC report last year on the planet's frozen regions maintained those same end of century projections for Greenland and allowed for only a small increase from Antarctica, blah, blah, blah. So this is, uh, we will make this the title of this rant. This is lead study author Thomas Slater, a researcher at the Center for Polar Observation and Modeling at the University of Leeds, quote, we need to come up with a new worst case scenario for the ice sheets because they are already melting at a rate in line with our current one. Sea level <clears throat> projections are critical in helping governments plan climate policy mitigation and adaptation strategies if we underestimate future sea level rise, then these measures may be inadequate and leave coastal communities vulnerable. Do you think so, that we need to come up with a new worst case scenario uh, <laughs> yes, ice sheet, ice sheet losses at the upper end of the IPCC forecast would by themselves expose some 50 million people to annual coastal flooding worldwide by the middle of this century. And if we want to get real about it, it's going to be a lot more. But speaking of worst case scenarios, uh, I'm just going to take the uh, I'm just going to take the easy route and uh, and look at some Donald Trump news. What are we? 65 days from the elect, so 65 days from when we need to decide whether four more years of Donald Trump, see if this can help make your decision for you like your decision has not been made. Let's just pick four out of today's average day mainstream media. We're going to pick four reasons why four more years of Donald Trump is worse than a worst case scenario. Let's say if you're a wolf, U.S. wildlife officials aim to remove wolf protections in 2020. Do you think so? The Trump administration plans to lift endangered species protections for gray wolves across most of the nations, most of the nation by the end of this, this year, the director of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service said on Monday, quote, this is one of these uh, wolf killers from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Quote, we are working hard to have this done, 
by the end of the year, and I would say it is very imminent, close quote. Uh, the administration also is pushing ahead with a rollback of protections for migratory birds, despite uh, a recent setback in federal court, she said. Okay, so the Fish and Wildlife service uh, has proposed dropping the wolf, the gray wolf or the timber wolf, from the endangered species list in the lower 48 states, exempting a small population of Mexican wolves in the southwest. Uh, shot, trapped, and poisoned to near extinction. Last century, wolves in recent decades uh, have recovered in the Great Lakes and portions of the West. Today, the total population around 6,000. Uh, they have already been removed from the endangered species list in Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, and portions of Oregon, Utah, and Washington and the remaining federal protections are now in the crosshairs. Okay, from wolves to, uh, wow, imagine this one. Trump administration proposes easing oil and gas permitting in national forests. Do you think so? On the same day that it, you know, was uh, gutting wolf protections, it was a busy day yesterday in the Oval Office, the Trump administration on Monday issued a proposal that would make it easier to permit oil and gas drilling operations in national forests, angering environmental groups who said the move would harm wildlife and increase greenhouse gas emissions. Yes. The U.S. Forest Service, an arm of the Department of Agriculture, you know, because trees are corn stalks in the eyes of the U.S. Forest Service, um, oversees 192 million acres of national forest and grasslands, yesterday released proposed rules that would speed timelines for approving drilling leases and permits and for determining which lands are available to lease. Yes, uh, the Forest Service first said in 2018 that it planned to rewrite its rules to expedite oil and gas permits on forest lands. The new moves are part of President Donald Trump's efforts to boost fossil fuel production on our public lands and waters. Do you think so? Uh, environmental groups said the new rules would sidestep environmental reviews and reduce public involvement in the leasing process. That's the point of it. This is Michael Saul, an attorney for the Center for Biological Diversity, said, quote, this proposal would basically make the Forest Service a rubber stamp for the fossil fuel industry. So a vote for Donald Trump is a vote for killing wolves and a vote for drilling for oil and gas on our national forests. So, uh, okay. So now Trump is weighing in on the aquaculture boom. Trump eyes aquaculture boom, but environmentalists dig in. Yes, President Donald Trump <coughs> wants to <coughs> dramatically <coughs> wants to dramatically expand aquaculture production in the United States. 
that a coalition of environmentalists believes his plan would be bad for the oceans, unnecessary for food security, and difficult to implement. Uh, Trump's bid to grow fish farming is designed to address the so-called seafood deficit which refers to the fact that nine-tenths of the seafood Americans eat come from overseas. Uh, this executive, Trump's executive order includes provisions to expedite the development of offshore aquaculture in deep federal waters. Uh, Yep, environmental groups say this threatens to increase pollution and overdevelopment in the ocean at a time when many consumers aren't buying seafood. Yes. Uh, there you go. Uh, one more. One more reason we need a new worst case scenario four more years of Donald Trump. Trump administration finalizes coal plant pollution rollback. Man, this also yesterday, it was a busy day for Donald Trump. This is uh, again yesterday, the Trump administration finalized its weakening of rules aimed at reducing polluted wastewater from coal burning power plants that has contaminated streams, lakes, and underground aquifers. The change signed by Donald Trump yesterday will allow utilities to use cheaper technologies and take longer to comply with pollution reduction guidelines that are less stringent than what the agency adopted in 2015. It is just the latest in a string of regulatory rollbacks for coal power under Trump, actions that have failed to turn around the industry's decline. <clears throat> Blah, blah, blah. I'm sure we have a quote. Uh, let's see. The latest rule change covers requirements for cleaning coal ash and toxic heavy metals, including mercury, arsenic, and selenium from plant wastewater before it is dumped into waterways. Utilities are expected to save $140 million under the change. Do you think so? But environmentalists and former EPA officials warn the move will have public health and result in hundreds of thousands of pounds of pollutants annually contaminating water bodies. Uh, coal plants are responsible for much as 30% of all toxic water pollution from all industries in the U.S. combined. In the southeast, that number is higher. Uh, this is Betty Sutherland, uh, former science director for the EPA, uh, who retired in 2017, quote, this rule is going to continue to let these coal-fired power plants pour these toxins into our nation's rivers and streams, contaminating drinking water and fisheries for 2.7 million people. There you go. Uh, but I meant to close with uh, this story. Uh, and then I did not save it. 
I wanted to make just a a short comment uh, about Trump claiming that uh, that Joe Biden is being controlled by uh, is being quote controlled like a puppet from what did he say uh, folks in the shadows so finally we have an honest uh, statement coming out of Donald Trump's mouth that is exactly uh, anybody who does not understand that Joe Biden is being controlled like a puppet by people in the shadows. Uh, one thing I got to say for Donald Trump, uh, that, uh, that he is not being controlled by people in the shadows. Well, actually, uh, my comment about his comment about Biden what shadows Biden is openly in, in the bright light of day being controlled like a puppet. Uh, he is a he is a straight ahead as Obama and Hillary, uh, j just a whore for the global corporatocracy. Now, as I've said before, Donald Trump at least is not a whore for the uh, global corporatocracy. He's even worse. He's a stooge. He, he is doing their bidding for them uh, and, and, and not even getting paid for it. Uh, you know, who needs a whore when you have a stooge? It, it makes no difference. Uh, Donald, well, it makes some difference. It's the same difference uh, Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton. Uh, as far as the planet is concerned, Donald Trump is a nuclear radiation uh, burn uh, on the planet, while uh, Joe Biden is, uh, you know, just a third degree sunburn uh, on the planet. Uh, the Joe Biden. Uh, joke environmental record is going to be about the same uh, as the joke Farrakh Obama in it. He's going to be playing step and fetch it to the global corporatocracy. Uh, so it makes, again, yes, it does make a difference if you're a wolf. My guess is that uh, Joe Biden would keep uh, protections for wolves, probably, probably would not be opening up more of our national forest to oil and gas drilling, but it wouldn't surprise me one bit if, if Joe Biden agrees with Donald Trump on the aquaculture one. Uh, anyway. I gotta wrap this up because uh, I gotta get back to my bog garden and I need to make a big old pot of creamed corn to survive the collapse of global industrial civilization and I highly suggest <clears throat> you get out there and enjoy your bog garden while you still can. We have, what is it, 65 days, 65 days uh, before election day, which could be one of the strangest days on the planet in the history of humanity 65 days from now. Are you ready for election day, Sancho? Bye, guys.